this time of year, we are lucky to get to live next to all these beautiful colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, and yes, our blue sky and sea. Here at the Poly Hill Arboretum, you can find colors all year round. Polly Hill was a gardener, a horticulturalist, who created this beautiful place where plants from all around the world live together. You can find plants from Africa and Asia, North America, and this monkey puzzle from South America, all living right next to each other. This species from Europe, the cyclamen, gave me a little glimpse of purple here in the fall. I was looking for purple. Of course, I could have looked right up in the sky. On Martha's Vineyard, we have beauty all around us. Like the Polly Hill Arboretum, Martha's Vineyard is a mix of things that were brought here, plants, people, ideas, and also of what was native here, the spirit and soul and people who were already the vineyarders, already the inhabitants of Noipe, this beautiful island. We are going to think about a song. For the last of our color songs, this is purple. And we're going to use a tune by a composer named Antonin Dvorak. Dvorak was an immigrant to America, and he taught in New York City. And when he was living in New York, he also traveled around America, and he was inspired by these wide open spaces. And he chose to write a symphony about America called the New World Symphony, Symphony from the New World, his Ninth Symphony. This was in 1893, so over a hundred years ago. But in New York, he had a student named Harry T. Burley, and Mr. Burley was also a composer and a singer. His family background, he was an African American, and his grandfather raised him. His grandfather had been a slave and had lived through slavery and taught Harry music by ear, or orally, from that African-American spiritual music tradition. We talked about him last year, that composer. Mr. Burley shared this music with Mr. Dvorak. Mr. Dvorak also was inspired by the Native American music that he heard in the United States, and he said during his lifetime that these were very important musical traditions that he thought that composers should be borrowing from to create American music. And that's what he did. So this theme from the, the Largo movement, the Largo is the slow movement, is one that Mr. Dvorak really wanted to have sound like African American spiritual song or Native American musical tradition, and it does. In the symphony, Antonin Dvorak has this theme played for the first time by a wind instrument called the cor anglais. I don't have a cor anglais, but I do have a recorder. I've been using it as a pointer, but now I'm going to show you what it really could sound like. Here's the theme of the Largo.
I'm no master flow recorder player, but it's a pretty simple theme. There are actually only five notes in the theme. It's a pentatonic sound, and you can you could probably play this at home. You could even do it on the piano, even if you're a beginner piano pianist with your five fingers. I wrote it in C major, so it would be easy for you. Here's middle C, and your thumb would be on that middle C. Middle C is the middle key of the whole piano board. Find the middle key. That's where your thumb goes. So this would go. If these are one, two, three, four, five, three, five, five, three, two, one, two, three, five, three, one, two, three, long two, three, five, five, three, two, one, two. the letters of the word purple to create a song from this melody. The same way we have for the rest of our mnemonic songs. I'll move so that you can either just read the letters if you're still practicing reading letters, or if you want to practice reading the music with me, you can follow the recorder. So, the song will go. P U Whether you're singing along or playing along, I hope that it's making sense, this notation, the musical notation. Like we said, it's a code for how to create the music written on a page, on a piece of paper. And once you break that code, once you know how to do it, you're like a computer that can read code on the internet and the whole, a whole world of information becomes available to you. There's an important difference in the notes on this page that, that we didn't see last week. Some of the notes are filled in and some of them are open circles. These, which are open circles with a line, those are called half notes. And this one that's an open circle with the, word, with the letter E attached to it, is a whole note. That means it gets the whole bar all to itself. No other notes go in it. A half note gets half of the bar to itself. See? It gets this whole half of the space of music by itself. Whole notes, half notes. As I was writing out the notation for purple and the sign for purple, I realized that the color purple is a blend of two primary colors, red and blue. And I thought that was really appropriate for our week this week. Talking about how American music is a blend of all of the people who live here.